Hi guys, welcome back. So today, if you haven't already guessed from the title, I'm going to be discussing some of my oil paint paintings. It took a while then to get that painting word out. There's obviously the abstract, well, um, what was it, visual description? It basically looks a lot more like something than it does. It does not have to look realistic, it just has to get across the simplicity of marks to make the painting that I'm drawing realistic enough that I can see what it is if, you, if that makes any sense it's basically very it's very much more observational in terms of making sure the composition is right and working off of an image or in a situation where you're in front of that landscape <laughs> that's a lot of words to come out your mouth if you haven't speak, spoken all day it's pretty much down about five minute walk away and it's that has been um, concreted over the old railway track that bit is, that is. Um, um, having a lot of green in the painting is very, very hard to, oh, he fell over. Um, um, and the, oh, pardon me, very much working on not And I believe one. I always get muddled up between A3, A3, A2, and A1. I can never quite exactly work out what size it is. I don't know why. I think it's just the numbers just f mess with my brain. <laughs> so this next one, I find it very hard to balance. I think I might just pop it down there. There you go can never really get it right but basically tilt you. there you go also I forgot to mention all these paintings are either balanced on other artworks um, this one's currently balancing on a sculpture it's not really it's just to make sure it doesn't hang up <clears throat> it's a very simple thing the, all these paintings are quite light so it's not going to damage my sculptures I did bear that in mind so before anyone asks me or comments about it, it's that all the paintings I'm using are actually going to be balanced on a sculpture piece, which is that all the paintings are light anyway, so I shouldn't have any problem with damaging that, etc. etc. Back to this one. This one was actually very key because, um, like, oh, I can't think of had a lot of vi environmental nourishment somewhere that I've never been to before, never been to before. So, with that in mind. This was the first one I made. This is actually, I believe it to be uh, A2, roughly A2, I want to say. Um, I think it's a little bit smaller, but I'm not 100% sure. But this one, um, go back and like redo it. If it was at the time of making this, I would have gone back and well corrected some areas just because it kind of sticks out a little bit more. But yeah, and. Yeah, like I said, move into oil paints a lot quickly, a lot more quickly and actually get good outcomes that are actually selling, which is very surprising for me because not a lot of my oil paints normally sell. I think the only time they really sell is when they're of, um, when they're paintings of still life, like fruit, and um, that's always a good one to make if I am looking to make commercial artwork, basically. Roughly a... Actually, I think it's A3 actually. That will make sense. Yeah, A3. I don't know why I said A2. It's definitely not A2. I think that's a bit too big. I think that's the double the size. But anyway, this is worth the Travers. Um, I think about 15 hours work. I don't, I don't know. I don't think it was that much actually. I think it was more literally painted over it in oil, in oil paint. Yeah, I think... Um, again, this is worth the Travers. Um, this is, I think it believes... So yeah, it can, and it's a lot more focused downwards. The last painting I did, which was the Worth of Travers one, that one was a lot more focused on the sea and kind of the characteristics of looking out. This one is a lot more of you're standing literally on the edge of a cliff, looking at the cliffs, and also 
seeing the effects of the sea I just really like the idea that it can really just put you in the place and make you feel like you know what's happening in that situation and I believe this is what the painting's doing. Okay so this one has to be one of my pride and joys. It was so complicated and so much time and effort went into creating this painting that I really don't know where it all went. I think this painting you may have seen already on my channel. It has pretty much been one of the main paintings that I've recorded and then shown you how to paint onto which was a very brave step for me because sometimes when you're painting and you're recording at the same time I get more focused on what the recorder is picking up rather than what is on the painting and that is definitely what has happened with a few of my other paintings they haven't worked out because I was more obviously focused on what the recording was picking up rather than what I was putting on the board is something I am trying to improve and it happens a lot so with this one it worked out so well looking through what you're you're seeing compared to what my eye is seeing you look a lot more three-dimensional compared to what I'm seeing I'm not saying it doesn't look three-dimensional in my view but sometimes paintings can look a lot better through the camera than they do in person it does not mean I do not love this painting this painting is amazing I thought it was the one of the best paintings I have ever done in terms of realistic and kind of composition and contrast with the use of colour obviously. With my history of colour it is very well there hasn't really been a history of colour since for like ages until about the last year and a bit. It has sprouted up a couple of times in college but even then it was very very hard to understand that certain colours don't deserve to be next to each other because they're really either too contrasting or they are just very very much they just don't work basically I'm still trying to get my head around it like the what does work and what doesn't work but in terms of texture this is bang on <laughs> I just love this so much I could literally stare at it all day it's really surprising I always forget that I'm actually the one who made this it's when you make an artwork and you just kind of sit back and you go did I actually? Did my brain think of that? Like, how amazing is that? Like, your brain can come up with something like this. But anyway, so this one is A1 in size. It is taken from a image for when I went to Turkey about, you know, two years coming this summer. I was very lucky to get a travel bursary from my university that allowed me to go travelling two weeks in Turkey and um, visiting loads of like really cool and educational sites. It was very cultural and very exciting to like listen and learn about their history. I don't know about you but I find holidays that are very educational also are very good for the brain but it also relaxes you because you've got something else to focus on. It kind of takes the pressure off of you trying to, as an artist, expand yourself and then talk about yourself a lot it's very very draining and sometimes you just want to learn more things and become the student rather than the master sometimes but anyway so yeah that's the last of the four paintings I want to show you there are a couple others but they're not quite complete yet and I just want to kind of leave them alone and let them sit until I feel the need to go back onto them because trying to do a painting when you're not in the mood does really ruin your painting. I've learnt from experience from that and I just cannot back into it anymore until I feel the need to paint. But anyway, that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below any suggestions you have or anything you want to see on my channel. I'm open to any offers at all. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed because you get to see amazing content like this and you get to see into my artist life and you get to see me grow as an artist. Like this video if you haven't already liked it and with that said I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I shall see you guys next time. Bye!